Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forgecraft Evolved. I'm Action Evolved, and today, before we get started, do me a real quick favor, scroll down just a little bit, hit that subscribe button for me, help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers. Uh, costs you nothing, helps me out a lot. And with that out of the way, let's hop right into this episode. So last episode, we worked on a couple things. We started getting these elevators working, these lifts. And you see we're offloading some tin, we're offloading some copper right here. And then we moved those all the way over through this mountain to, to a somewhat permanent uh, smelting location. Uh, I, uh, again, am probably going to end up making dedicated kind of smelting systems for each resource. But for now, you know, eventually we'll get iron and lithium over here too. Just as kind of a temporary stopgap. Uh, we're kind of, you know, we're going in a kind of a weird way where we're kind of pushing through the technology really quick before we get anything sustainable going because, again, you know, we got a goal, right? So that's what's going on for now, but we have a, a little bit more to do, right? So in, uh, I don't remember which episode, it might have been the last one, maybe a couple before that. We unlocked, or so I thought, the ability to make quarries, right? So if I go over here... And we look at the crafter or the manufacturing plan. I'm looking, you know, I say, hey, where, where's my quarry? If I spell it right, where's my quarry? And nothing is popping up, right? So I thought to myself, you know, what's going on there? Why don't I have any quarries in here? And the answer to that, I think, is that I need to get a little bit of research. I need to do a little bit of scanning, right? I need to, I need to explore a little bit more, as it were. So. I have a tool that will help me with that, and it is right here. Toxic Particle Filter. Those of you that know this game know what that means. That means we are going to the Toxic Caverns, right? Uh, so, uh, what's going on here? Let me grab those guys. Let's load this thing up, right? Still doing it by hand, right? That should make me another 15. We'll just drop this off. The research I'm doing now is the the power grid, advanced power grid, some 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 something like that. So that'll do its thing there. You know, we still got quite a ways to go. Ultra power grid, right? What does that give us? Ultra power grid. Nice Mark III lasers. These are what I want the most. Mark IV battery components because, like I said before, eventually in, in my dream world, I have. I don't know, like a big solar farm somewhere. And initially, I don't know, maybe I'll put it, put it out there, put it out there, put it out in that corner. I don't really know. Maybe not in a in a corner direction because you know that's where we got the overmines and all that. But uh, eventually, like I'd love uh, Mark IV batteries. Um, what we call conduits connecting everything, solar panels, a uh, a generator farm somewhere off the side. So. That's all the dream, but we can't, you know, we can't get there until we actually get the research done, right? So, um, with that out of the way, let's run down and see if we can't explore down in the toxic camera because I have a very specific target in mind that I need to find. All right, and so I think a natural kind of exploring point is from right here. So we're at our nickel setup right there, and uh, what is, is that? Iron? Wow. All right. So we kind of have this little cavern area over here. And I only ever got so close so I can kind of scan some stuff. I haven't really gone down. So we're going to kind of like take a look, right? Oh, I did make a little bridge here, it's, it appears. You know, because we got to be safe when we're exploring. But we want to get... So you can see we've got some large chasms down there, right? Ooh, ah. Okay, careful, carefully. Carefully. Oh, see... It's just death all around, right? Look at that. Look at that fall. Okay. So, where's... How can I do this safely, right? And also, I need to make sure I remember how to get back up, right? So, I'm going to kind of put some lights there so that I can hopefully see, right? Now, I'm wondering if I grapple onto this area if that'll just kill me. Man, <laughs> I really miss having my jetpack. Oh my gosh, that's so deep. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Well, not exactly what I wanted. It's alright. It's alright. We're, we're, we're yo-yoing, right? Okay. Okay. This works. 
This works. We are in the toxic caverns. And for starters, I'm just gonna grab that emerald, you know. Uh, let's keep a kind of a path lit up for us. Right? Because we know we generally want to go kind of like up, up back that way, right? So I'm thinking we go down here just because it is... Actually, <laughs> what am I doing? What is unknown? Okay, let's see. Because if those of you who may not know, we are looking for biomass. Because biomass starts kind of like the... The refinery process. Oh man. Okay. Uh, let's get some light in here. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I'm at a coal. Oh boy. All right. So I guess we're gonna be doing this the hard way, right? I mean, worst case scenario, we just die, right? Okay, that's not too far. All right. What do we got out here? Oh, here we go. Boom. Perfect. Go ahead and scan that. Now, we're probably going to need some of this too, right? So, I should, if I'm being a smart guy, if I'm, you know, being a prepared gamer, I should probably write this these locations down so I can figure out where I'm at, right? So, I'm at X72, Z, minus 11. And that'll get me roughly where I need to go. And what is this? Biomass. All right, so let's get back to the surface. If I can figure that out, back to the surface, and then we'll uh, get that stuff scanned. All right, so now that we're back here, let's do a little scanny scan. Biomass, this should be Topaz, right? Topaz focusing lens. What new projects? Here we go. I think this is a big one. Hydrocarbon recombination. Uh, not super crazy, but still kind of a pain. Jetpacks, huge refineries, jet turbines, quarries. Okay, so this is this is what we need to do to kind of like really progress, right? Um, but for now, you know, I've been thinking, I <laughs> I did not like having to run all these belts over here, right? And I kind of want like a like a proof of concept system for matter movers and all this stuff, right? Because also this is like real slow. And I know we're we don't really have like a a target for this for this stuff over here, but I'm thinking that maybe I move some of these machines down into my smelting area. Now again, this is not going to be end game stuff, right? It's going to be kind of temporary. But I like look at this. I I need I need something to have this output or it just stacks up into my inventory, right? Because I gotta keep collecting it and then blah, 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 right? So, let's figure out, and I already know a couple machines right off the bat, right? This guy, lightweight machine housing crafter. I'm gonna take this whole machine, just this whole thing right here, because that uses just tin. Uh, this is iron gears, what do we got here? This is like a little, is this, uh, oh, servo motors. You know what, why not? Servo motor maker, we're taking it. I want you. Uh, this guy would actually be really nice to replicate down there. Power is interesting. In fact, can I make more solar panels? Can I do that? I should be able to if I look in the right area. I can make one. What are my charged lithium coils doing? They're, they're doing nothing for me. Okay, got it. So let's make at least 20 more of those, but then that's only three, right? So that'll be three total of these guys, which is really not enough. So I guess we'll use pyrothermics, although the whole point is I want to use solar for the, hmm, for the matter movers that I want to move. Uh, I guess we could take from here. I think I'm already sending coal over to this, right? Or I'm just sending the power. Maybe I should just send the coal directly on some belts. It's funny. I'll send the coal on belts that I'm getting rid of to do other things with, right? So, yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all these guys. They are not necessary. At least for the time being. We'll come back and deal with all that. 
but I need these to uh, further but I need those to test out my theories and kind of figure out how exactly I'm gonna do this stuff so how are we looking on matter movers I can build five because of what copper wire okay maybe that's another thing that we automate down there extruder plant sold what are you a coiler Hmm, I'll leave that there. This is a belt maker. Okay, let's go down and let's kind of replicate some of these machines because at least that way it's something it's something for everything to off output into, right? Okay, so what do we have? Copper on the right, tin on the left. Okay, so what do we have that uses copper? Number one, copper wire, right? So... Uh, can I make a manufacturing plant? In fact, I think I can. All right, I want to check for one more thing. That'll just make this kind of easy, hopefully. And that thing is this guy, the priority splitter, and it takes a stamper plant. Um, I think that's cheap, yeah? Stamper plant? Yep, so I'm just gonna make a bunch of those because I'm eventually gonna be using a lot of these, right? Priority splitters, I think, are how I'm going to run everything. And the way that'll work, and here, I'll, I'll show you when we, got, when we get down there, right? So I'm going to want to make sure that, I, I guess the general manufacturing strategy for me is that I want to do kind of like a, an overflow type system, right? And to help accomplish that, I'm going to use something, I'm going to use one of these, right? So what does it do? It takes items coming in on a belt, right? So we have like a belt. And the first thing to do is it'll send everything to the right. Okay. In fact, if we if I go to the hot bar, you can kind of read. So since all incoming items right, unless right the right path is blocked, then it'll send all the incoming items left, right? So what does that mean? That means when we're manufacturing, and again, remember, eventually, like this whole induction plate will be just one resource, right? So it'll be all copper, right? So I can have them come in and eventually stagger them or something and have it so that items will come in. Uh, maybe I'll actually rotate it for now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna rotate for now. So we'll do, actually where's, of course I don't, I don't have them on here, do I? Belts, belts, okay. So I'll have a belt, we'll have it turn in. And so, well, I guess this is a bad example, right? Because so what I'm thinking about is <laughs> this would be the manufacturing line and this would be the continuation but it's weird to send it right back the way it came so maybe I'll actually just put that there and we'll just manufacture off in this direction and we'll worry about crossing belts later because I, I don't want to think about that right now so that means First things first, copper. So maybe we'll do copper wire setup, right? Which is, is pretty easy. That's just a, a hopper, an extrusion plant, and then another hopper, right? And that's add only, this will be a move only. We just do something like this. So that means that all this copper is gonna come out, and in fact, we can just do it, right? Just like that, right? All the copper is gonna come in and immediately go to the right. And then no matter how much comes in, it's gonna go right until this line is completely saturated. And I know you're thinking to yourself like, well, what happens if, you know, you're, th this is just constantly working and your output is all held up going to this first item? Well, I think we can get around that in a couple different ways. Number one, we're gonna have multiple lines, right? So we can have a couple lines dedicated for each set of resources, right? And if you look at this is already, this is already kind of doing its, it's already kind of working faster than it can hold up. In fact, I'm just gonna, I'll just saturate that line, right? So one thing we can do, we can limit the input kind of buffer size, right? So if I were to use a smaller hopper, I could use, you know, a logistics hopper. Oh, that's a little two slot hopper. I could use that and that'll make sure that nothing will back up. It'll be however many can fit on the belt and the hopper, right? So if this is a logistics hopper, then it'd be three bars. 
And once those three slots are filled up, everything else will continue on down the line, right? So this is one way to to ensure, you know, with, with some kind of pre-planning that the highest priority stuff gets the resources first, right? So maybe in our actual production facility, we'll structure it so that the higher tier kind of more critical components, the more advanced components start off near the front with the lower tier in the back, or maybe not. I don't know. That might be hard to kind of, to actually get that all set up. So we'll kind of see, right? So for now, we got this going. What was next? We wanted to do, um, and it's actually kind of nice when we're going this way, because I can do something like this, right? I can do, and it's, this is going to get kind of messy, but it is what it is, you know? So for now, I want to do, let's see, I need a hot bar. I will do, where are you? I want, nope, this guy, lightweight machine housing crafter. And that's gonna come kind of at the end, right? So first things first, we're gonna do this. So we'll come out. And again, I know this is kind of gross looking, but just bear with me, this is all temporary. So we'll come out. Uh, actually, I think I can go straight into a hopper. And then from there, we'll need to go into a stamper plant. So we'll drop, right, that takes stamper plant. Hold on. Tin plates, yeah. Okay. So from there, we'll go out into a stamper plant, which is right there. So stamper plant. And then lightweight machine housing crafter. Oh, actually, I think it needs a hopper. So we'll just do that. We'll do this guy, and they'll do the hopper that we want to add it all to, right? So add only, remove only. And then we can very easily just turn into it like that, thusly, and just like that. So now we're at least making lightweight machine housings and copper wire just straight up, right? Uh, what else? Servo motor maker, which I think also took some of this stuff. So what we'll do here is we'll just do that. And we can do something like this, give it a little space, plop another one down, right? And so you can see the potential is here to kind of like splinter things off as you go down and kind of go at a diagonal. And maybe that's what we end up doing. I don't know. You know, we're gonna kind of see. So from there, I think we need, uh, maybe I'll just have it come off there. Hopper, remove only, extruder. And then I think we can go straight into the um, servo motor maker. Straight into it from the coils, right? Oh, I think it does need a hopper. That's fine. That's fine. We'll go servo motor maker and then another hopper, right? So we'll make that remove only, we'll make that add only, and we'll we'll hope nothing comes in that way. So now eventually, you know, if I just kind of saturate this so that more bars don't come in. So you see now the the line is fully saturated. So now the bars are gonna overflow in this direction, right? So if if copper wire is the number one thing that I want to make then that's what we're going to get, you know? And so the, the real key is, is that we're going we're gonna to want our output speed or our manufacturing speed to be faster than our consumption speed. If we don't, if we want to be as efficient as possible, right? And I guess we're always striving for that, but um, we'll see if we get there, right? So now it looks like the, looks like everything has the power it needs. I might throw some force inductions on these just to, to prepare that for later because right now we're, I mean we're sending 3.8 because maybe that's all it's taking yeah so it looks like we're more than more than able to keep up with the power demands for now with just that which means we can go work on some other things like making more matter movers so uh yeah I'll make 13 I think that's enough 
So what I want to do now is I want to kind of start fleshing out how this stuff is going to run down here, right? And my thought process is right now we have everything kind of coalescing onto a single belt here, right? Well, I, I, I think we can accomplish the same thing, um, except I don't want to, I mean, eventually I'll do three matter moves, right? I'll do one on each, but for now, I'm not going to have the time or I don't have the resources and the infrastructure set up to really do that. So I might have to do something drastic. And I'm not a huge fan of it, but it must be done, right? So if we're going to imagine, and I don't know if this works, honestly. I don't know. I am kind of guessing here, right? But I am wondering. And in fact, do I have these guys? Um, let me throw them on a belt. Or on a hot bar. Yeah, I have them here. Okay. So if I do something like this, right? And I steal some of those and we go like this and like this. And then I drop one of these on here. Number one, I'm wondering, will that give me enough just straight up power, right? So we'll have to clear some of this out. We'll have to slap another one here, and we'll also need to make sure we have some sky clearance here. But luckily, I think as long as there's a, an unimpeded vertical line of sight to the solar panel, I think it'll get energy. Yeah, so it, it definitely sees the energy, right? Let's give ourselves a little bit of room here. And I kind of want to just do a little test. Uh, but I don't want to put a hopper there hmm is this holding anything I mean it is getting power so that's good but I don't know if this has transmitted anything yet it has used matter mited one items okay all right that's a good sign so let's go I guess 64 in this direction all right, and I think about here is the limit. Let's build ourselves some little bit of headroom here. Now this one's gonna kind of suck because we're in the middle of a mountain. And this might, these situations might be good candidates for gathering the power elsewhere and just transmitting it because there, it, there's just so much rock up there. So. I have one battery, but then I think I'll be able to make it outside. So let's do, hmm, where am I gonna get power from? Now th now here comes the, the fun, it, ah, man, maybe I should just dig to this, dig to the sky, you know? So let, let's, let's just try that, right? Wouldn't you know, not that far. And again, eventually when we have just like the, the mass infrastructure that we're going to need to do all this, it won't be a big deal, right? So are you, all right, so you are collecting. Awesome. Matter mited zero. Oh, no, oh no, these don't need storage hoppers. Okay. I, I know this for a fact. And of course, as things would turn out, we're just a little bit off. So... We're gonna have to actually do something like that. We're gonna have to undercut this to make sure that we have the appropriate distance in between all the matter movers. So I will now have to cut a new hole in the mountain, which will be a lot of fun. So I will see you guys on the other side of this mountain. So now we put on our last solar panel and hope that things work out. Is there room in that hopper? There is room in that hopper. Will this work? I can't say whether or not it's more or less expensive than using belts, but I think it sure does look better. And I mean, it, you know, it's not that hard to set up. It's just, you know, you, you gotta 
You got to do it all. You just got to get all the stuff, right? So let's see here. Any day now. Any day we will get copper flowing. Right? <gasps> yes. Yes. And these will do 150 a minute. So that's pretty neat. And one of the things we can do once we start mass manufacturing all this stuff is make the organic solar panels too. Yes. Oh, oh. I got so excited. I'm jumping off over here. Yes. Oh, see? Once they all connect, look at how fast they go. I mean, it kills the power. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, look at that. That is so cool. And if we want to supplement these, we totally can with, you know, batteries and laser energy transmitters. I've done it on plenty of uh, plenty of worlds before. You know, we can even put the solar panel so we can do matter mover, battery, solar panel, but then also use the batteries and laser energy transmitters to, to move batteries supplemental power right oh man i think that's just so cool and i collected a lot of this stuff anyway so let's just throw it in there wires yes please what else lightweight machine housings okay i'll take them um uh, yeah we've got some servos so i think if i right now i don't think our transmission is as fast as it is with the belts but this was a good proof of concept, I think, to kind of illustrate what's in store for uh, for the time being, right? And so those solar panels give us, just to illustrate, right? 22 and a half power per second, I think. And if we go look at the organic solar panels. Yeah, the organic solar panels, I think they are 44 and a half, maybe? But I know they're like quite a bit more than these. Yeah, and... So the chitin is a little bit, we'll have to farm some of that. Although I think we can make this. I think it's possible to make this stuff. But yeah, refined liquid resin. So that's another thing we're gonna have to do fairly soon. I don't know if we have any, any active hive mines kind of close. There's one right there. There's one, I don't know if you guys can see over there. There's some out there. So we'll definitely have to go hunt for some of these hive mines to build a uh, an agitator. An agitator refined liquid resin setup. Oh man, this thing is just so cool though. Oh man, I love it. The only thing is I don't know where it's actually pulling from. I don't know if it's pulling from all three, which is my hope. Oh, he's gotta be, but I don't actually see. You know, whatever. I'll just let it do its thing. Looks like this actually already went down and came back up. So that's kind of cool. So I think as one of the last things I want to do, I want to, I kind of want to see what does a Mark II force induction cost us in terms of power per second, All right? So that we're using, oh, let me, let's see. Press E, doesn't tell me Oh, I should probably... I'm, I'm over here smelting titanium and just failing horribly. Okay, so that uses quite a bit of power per second. Way more than we're sending. But I think they were both using three, the other smelters. Hmm. Power usage increased by 8x. So that would put us from like 6 to 40. Right? AKA, not something we can do unless we actually just move the coal over. Which, again, may not be the end of the world, honestly. Uh, I don't have any pyrothermics. I think, you know what, let's do that. Let's get some of this coal running over here. In fact, because I think it's, uh, yeah, it is enriched. So we'll get some of this enriched coal going. This is not doing anything. Storage full. Okay. We'll get some of this enriched coal moving over here. And we'll throw some uh, force inductions on these. 
and then we'll call it an episode. Okay, so first things first, I want to slap down two pyrothermics right there. And I want a logistics hopper, but I don't have one handy. So we'll do something like that. And we'll do this, this. Eventually it'll be like this and down, right? So where is that coming out of? Right there, right there. We'll get rid of that guy. And then I will use a little step down. Assuming that takes it from there. I don't think it does. Okay, then we'll do this. And that guy. And hopefully, hopefully this does its job. And then I'll need to connect these. And this should be giving us quite a bit of energy, right? 64, 64, so that's 128 power per second. So with that, um, shoot, with that, I think we can use Mark II and Force Inductions, right? We can use two of them at least. Now, uh, it, there's probably not really a reason, like we don't need that. In fact, you're... Eh. We don't need that right now. We're not, we're, we don't have the infrastructure to produce that much, to pump that much ore into there. Cause look, oh, I guess that is full. Yeah, I guess that is full, but you know what? It's fine. We'll just slap these guys, one there and one there. And now we're using 10, 12 power per second, 14, 16, 18, 19. It should go up to about 24. That'd be roughly, yeah, I just saw it peak over almost 25, 25 and change, 26 even. Okay, so, but this is, I mean, both of these are running off one generator, basically. And this is kind of what I don't like, but it's fine for now. It's fine. This is all temporary infrastructure. And one thing I like, just lightweight machine housings on, on demand pretty much, so. All right, guys, uh, that was quite a bit. Nice little proof of concepts, the starts of automation going on. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this with me. Uh, it, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to be working in between episodes to get some of that that research done because next episode, I, I would love. And again, I don't think like it, it's going to be kind of backwards how we're doing everything. I would love to be able to slap some quarries down and kind of start doing that whole process. I know for a fact that we're going to need to figure out power. Uh, I might have to do infused coal, which I think I can. We'll just have to find a nice little deposit that is specifically kind of for fueling one of the quarries because, you know, I, I, I kind of view this as like a, like a, like a domino effect, right? Once we get one quarry down, or like a snowball, I guess is, is a better a better analogy here. Once we get the first quarry down, that should give us some resources, which will let us, you know, build some infrastructure, which will let us put another quarry down, which will let us beef up our infrastructure, produce more, another quarry, so on and so forth, until, you know, we just, we are where we are, right? We are where we need to be. So that's kind of, the, that's kind of the plan. I, I want to, after this, I, I think after the power grid and the hydrocarbon recombination, I'm going to hold off on doing any more research because I don't want to be feeding this thing by hand. I don't want to be making these things by hand, and I'm already having to do that quite a bit. I want to start automating, but I, wa I really want to get the quarries going first. So that's the plan. If everything goes right, no, don't hold me to this. But if everything goes right, the plan is quarries next episode. I hope to guys hope to see you guys there. And with that, we'll see you in the next one.